Imagine for a moment that you could transfer your soul into another body. Sounds pretty fantastic, right? Like some, like out of some kind of a movie. But this migration of souls is actually an advanced science and it's been used for thousands of years by advanced scientists or magicians. Today we're going to talk about this soul migration. And I have talked about it a little bit before when I've spoken about the transmigration of the soul and how some societies and some dark magicians were using this as a way to avoid karmic debt. And that is one of the tools, one of the reasons, one of the motivations for transferring your soul into the body of another person. Because in doing so, you can escape the debts associated with this body, the, the identity, the reputation, the financials, and the karma of one body, and you can jump into another body, and you can do the same stuff over again without, without so much as, without penalty, and without detection. That's the other thing that's important is that when you migrate from one body to another body, you do so so that the agencies who monitor this stuff, they don't know which body you went into. And we'll talk about some, some aspects of that later on. This is more advanced. I, I think this is already an advanced discussion for most, for new people, this is way beyond their ability to understand. But my subscribers are pretty smart, okay? You guys have been following me for a while. You know my modality. I bring you stuff that no one else does. Uh, and that's what that's what my channel is about. My channel is about bringing you stuff that no one else can really bring out. And I present it in a way that we can understand it. And I present ideas that are very out there, very advanced. A lot of the stuff I talk about is advanced, especially in comparison to mainstream. So therefore, we don't have the full understanding, we don't have the full uh, science, we don't have the full research. In the future, you're going to see a lot of the things I've talked about come into physical manifestation on a broader scale. So we're getting the jump. You are ahead of the curb. And I don't expect you to understand everything. That's not the point. The point is, the point, the basic point is to be aware. Be aware that there are other things going on and how they might work. And once you open up your awareness, you start to absorb information. You start to learn. And for some other people, that might activate their own awareness, their own knowledge that you might be someone who has this ancient knowledge and it's stored inside of you. And once you start listening to these ideas, it starts to, it starts to make sense because you've been here before. Maybe you're a reincarnate or you've had a past life or you're a magician and you're in denial. There are a lot of magicians in denial, <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of things going on beyond my discussion. It has to do with your own lives. It has to do with society. So 
I'm just focusing on what I'm talking about. And today, I'm talking about the migration of the soul from one human body into another human body. My understanding is that this science has been around for thousands of years. And I can point to one class that definitely understood it. And we can go, go back to the Egyptian pharaohs, which are, you know, thousands of years ago, that they had this science and then maybe technology, right? Because you're interacting with reality. Now, why, besides karmic debt, escaping karmic debt, there's a lot of benefit that you can get from jumping bodies. So here's, a, here's an example. Imagine I am, in, uh, I am the head of a wealthy family, a dynasty. Let's say I've, I've accumulated a great amount of wealth because I belong to a secret society, okay? It's just hypothetical. I don't belong to a secret society. Let's say there's a secret society and we have amassed a great amount of wealth, financial wealth, uh, we have land, we have political power, political influence, we have patents, we have corporations, and I'm getting old. Let's say I'm getting into my 70s or 80s. Now, under normal, under normal circumstances, when I go, I leave everything to my descendants, my children, my spouse, my children, my grandchildren. But they don't have the same knowledge I have. I have accumulated knowledge. I know how to accumulate wealth. I know how the world works. I know how to influence politicians. I know how to run a corporation. I know how to manage people. I know media. I have all these skills that took my whole lifetime, that my father taught me. And I have not been able to impart all of that information to my children or my grandchildren. I may also have knowledge of the universe. I might have secrets of the cosmos. I might have magical power. That stays with me. Now imagine that I could transfer my soul to one of my descendants, let's say a son or a granddaughter. And by doing so, I ensure that my dynasty will live on because I am still here. <laughs> All bet in a different shape, different form. You ever heard the saying that you are, uh, you're just like your father? <laughs> Maybe you are the father. You are the father. Uh, someone famous said that. So there is a huge benefit. There's a huge, huge, not, not just karmic, not just financial, but there's a huge uh, benefit to coming back. And then once you're in, back into your bloodline, into your dynasty, then you take the mantle and you take all that knowledge and you build an even bigger dynasty a more powerful family, right? And then you teach those children. And then you keep doing this. Let's say you live 85, 95 years. Every century, you reincarnate into your own bloodline. And you teach other members to do the same thing. And if you belong to a secret society, they are doing the same things. So you get this dynasty, dynasty, powerful family, powerful family. 
and they create secret society one, secret society two. After so many centuries, you're now interacting with Stellans. You understand the mechanics of the afterlife. You have powerful magical ability because you reincarnate. You have past life knowledge. What you're also doing though, what you're also doing, you're able to track down others who are coming in with magical knowledge or reincarnates and you could interfere with their lives. Let's say you try to get them on board if they're not going to cooperate, you can take them out. You can hobble them. You can repress them. You can get rid of them. You can conspire against them. These are all your competitors, right? Because no one is going to come in to this reality with a massive amount of knowledge as much as you've been accumulating. So these families, these uh, reincarnates, have been accumulating massive knowledge, cosmic knowledge and power and wealth. And they have started to prevent others from bringing the positive. And you get this distortion of the world, this distortion of reality the setting the new, the new norm, creating scientific institutions which favor science and avoid metaphysics. That if you talk about metaphysics, you are censored, you are ostracized, you are called crazy. They create and, and, and bring forth religion, uh, orthodox religion, and they avoid the other ideas of spirituality. You see what happens though? <clears throat> when you get enough people working together and they look like people and they're not gonna talk about reincarnation. They're not gonna talk about magic. They're gonna be very private individuals. They'll be very logical, intelligent. They'll have representation, they'll have lawyers, they'll have spokespeople. You'll never get them talking about this metaphysic stuff, right? This esoteric stuff, which is done way in the background, in ritual, in secret society meetings, in groves, in forests, in basements. So imagine this has been happening for centuries, for let's say for thousands of years. You get a world that is distorted, where some people have an abysmal amount of wealth and other people cannot afford to buy a new pair of shoes. So that is, see it's, a, it's the idea is kind of scary to say that you can migrate the soul. Already people was like, well, there's no science to prove it. I am programmed not to respond to anything without evidence. But imagine this science, this magic, call it magic. It's been used for thousands of years. And the result is today, the world is distorted. And now you're seeing this influx of the new generation is trying to uh, upend some of those old control systems because these people, these uh, soul migrants, these refugees, I call them like soul refugees, or uh, what do you call them, not refugees, uh, rene renegades, soul renegades, they're getting old. A lot of the most powerful people and families, the, the patriarchs and the matriarchs are dying of old age. And a lot of them are not going to be allowed to continue this process. 
I thought you're seeing the new generation now trying to compete and fighting for their own ideas. So the, the, the playing field is being uh, evened out a little bit, but we're talking thousands of years of distortion and it's not gonna be fixed overnight. It's gonna take a long time. Now, so soul migration is very powerful. There are some issues with it. There are some issues because if you, sometimes the science is not perfect. So if you, you wanna target an available body, let's say I'm a male, let's say I'm a male and, I, and my life, my life, my health is going and I decide to jump, to jump out. And the magician, they're trying to track down a body and they track down a female body, a six-year-old female girl, girl, female. So there's no time to track, there's no one available and we've got someone we've, we think we can get into and they jump my soul Hypothetical, they jump into a six-year-old girl. Now, the old person, they still have awareness as a basic human being, and then they die. But the soul is already gone. <laughs> in that, in this example, six-year-old. Now, depends on the situation, depends on the magic, depends on the ability of the people involved because not everyone is good at it. So the girl might go through a, an identity crisis at six years old, right? And because let's say a male person is and then the male's gonna say, I'm a man, right? The, the, because there's, there's two souls. There's the soul of the girl and there's the soul of this reincarnate this soul renegade. And most people don't have the awareness to distinguish what the hell's going on. And we don't have the science to show this stuff. So it sounds like, you know, the girl says, I, I hear this voice and it says, I'm a man. And she goes to the parents and says, mom, I think I'm a man. <laughs> and the mom's like, oh my God, please. You're not a man. Mom, I'm a man. Now, let, let me just take a slight detour. I am not in any way against transgenderism. I'm not against, I have no gender bias or preference. What I'm talking about is uh, using magic or science, advanced science, for the wrong purpose to abuse this ancient knowledge. That's what I'm against. I have, it's nothing, it's very little to do with transgender or gender equality because that to me is a different discussion. In some cases though, as in my example, if, if a male soul migrates to a female body, what will happen is the female, in this case, will have an identity crisis, a gender crisis. And there will be a battle of the souls, you know, because the, 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 the female, but the female is a young, could be a young soul. So they don't have the same strength of character. They're still kind of fresh. They're a virgin soul. They don't have that, you know, that wisdom and that strength. And the old soul, the reincarnate, will have a lot of experience. It can be very stern. It says, I am, I'm a man. And the, the, the person might think that that voice comes from them, someone inside of them. Again, because we can't talk about this in mainstream, because people start calling your names, it is fortunate we can talk about it here to give you some awareness that there are, 
there are other things that may be going on. It's very difficult to know. It's very difficult to know. Is that your voice? Or is that the voice of somebody else? Is that the voice of your spirit guide? But we can see, we can see something, I believe personally, that we can see the evidence in everyday life. As an example, the rise in gender identity, right? The, the discussion of gender identity, the number of children who don't like their gender. This is all on the rise. 10 years ago it was very little. 10 years before that it was almost non-existent. So that we can see, although I can't say that it has to do with soul migration, but if you look at the number of cases now where a person, especially a young person, who doesn't even have a really a sexual identity at, at age six or seven, that they want to change their gender. And you get other people later in life. That the rise of this stuff, that this, this, um, this is, I think it's called like circumstantial evidence. <laughs> that something is going on that in some cases we might see, we might blame it on soul migration. In other cases, we blame it on some kind of natural gender or genetic uh, translation. I don't know the, the, the separation. I do know there's a science that especially these magicians, these dark magicians, and these secret societies, they've been using for thousands of years. Now, why would you do that if I had, if I was, if I had lived a terrible life and done bad things and have a lot of karmic debt, and I know how to create chaos in the world, and I, maybe I have magical power, you know, there has to be enough reason. There has to be enough reason. Then I jump from my body into another body. Why? Why? Because if I go to the other side, the afterlife, I will be, I will be caught. The people in heaven and the kingdom and the afterlife, they will now catch me and I will be in trouble because I've broken enough cosmic law and I've, I'm, a, I'm a renegade. I'm a, I'm a cosmic renegade who's been causing trouble. There has to be sufficient reason, there has to be sufficient evidence that once you go to the other side, that you get caught and you get re-educated and whatever happens. So, I don't go there, right? I don't go there. I stay in this re reality. I jump into another body. If I have to jump into a different gender, I jump into a different gender because I avoid incarceration. There's a lot of motivation. When you get into the spiritual and the cosmic, again, if you're stuck on the, on the logic and science, you will not understand what's really going on yet, today, well, maybe in the future. So when you have enough reason, either you can do it directly or you can do it through a society, a ritual, you jump bodies. Now in the new body, I don't have the same karmic debt. I don't have the same identity. I have a different name. I have now escaped that. And I use this body to live out my life, I may live in peace. I may live a normal life and not do very much. And because I will wait 
maybe later on in life when I find a a better body and I'll I'll migrate to that body and then I'll start causing trouble again, right? I don't have to do anything immediate. I could just be a terrible person and then nobody knows anything about my soul and then later jump to another body. And then I might start causing trouble again, building another dynasty, right? We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. They might just spend a lifetime, maybe spend half a lifetime just waiting till everything calms down and then jump out of that body, right? So once you understand that this technology, this science, you could jump from one body to another, live 10 or 15 years in that body, change the gender of that person, right? Let's say at six years old, they do a gender reassignment uh, from a girl to a boy. And then 15 years later, at age 21, you jump out. And that person's now like, well, gee, why did I become a boy? Right? Because now the soul's gone. The other soul might come back. And now you go into another body and you create havoc there. It could just be a temporary receptacle. It could be something more permanent, right? So you're avoiding karmic debt. So, you know, why, if you look in life, some people, if they can get away with doing bad things and other people get caught, right? Because people are good at avoiding getting caught. So you have this avoidance of karmic debt. You have this uh, maintaining a dynasty, perhaps, a series of knowledge. In some cases, you have a connection to other cultures, advanced races, Stellans. So you want to keep that. In Also, in a small amount of cases, you'll have Stellan souls. Uh, we've talked about this before, that a Stellan incarnates as a human, to have a human life, and then they can do different things in a human form. So you can have a positive Stellan, a good Stellan, and they can do positive things. And you can also have a, a negative or a dark Stellan. They migrate into a human body, and then they do some negative things. So in addition to human souls and uh, magicians, you also get Stellans and maybe other entities that take the human form and they can take it for a short period or they can take it for an entire lifetime or a series of lifetimes. In some cases, you would find that some people, some individuals can host a number of souls. So you can have um, you can have one person because of their genetics, because of who they are, you, they can host multiple souls in their lifetime. And again, while I can't prove it, we do see some circumstantial evidence in terms of um, reinvention a person reinventing themselves, a major rebirth, reinvention, rebirth, and it's quite significant. And sometimes this can show you that there is some kind of soul juncture. We don't know what happened. We, we don't always know what happened. I don't know always what happens, but we know something's happening. Whether it's, uh, whether the soul's expanding, whether there was a migration, and then later an exit and another migration. Um, we don't know. But we see this massive reinvention, reinvention. At some point, people cannot reinvent anymore, right? At some point in life, they stop, they lose that power, or they're, create, they're created, they, they lose that... Um, you know, people have these, especially artists, they have this creative phase and they go... They produce a massive amount of stuff for 10 years and that's where the best years and then they just dries up. And then maybe 10 or 15 years, nothing happens. 
and then they might have another little burst for five years. This can also be circumstantial evidence that there's some kind of uh, soul transfer, soul migration, expansion, something's happening that creates this flourish of activity, right? These peaks, right? Or somebody who has, who was on the, was a drug addict and an alcoholic and on their way out and all of a sudden they have a transformation. All of a sudden they turn their life around, right? They turn their life around. Circumstantial evidence, turn your life around and they, you know, they start a company and they start teaching and helping kids. This is also some evidence that we see these things happening. So there is, we know there's things happening. We don't often, we're not allowed to talk about soul migration, transmigration. Um, but there are reasons for it. When you talk about magic, let's end on this. When you talk about magic, now, if, if there's a soul who's escaping, let's say, karmic debt and incarceration, and they jump to a new body, they might have protections on them, magic, to prevent detection or protections. In some cases, they will be hobbled so that they don't reveal themselves, right? You're not able to do things that would um, attract, alert others, right? Let's say all of a sudden you did something, you know, painted a great painting and you're not, you don't even know how to paint. That might attract, alert somebody. So you might be hobbled. I'm a terrible painter. I'm a terrible at this, I'm terrible at that, right? In some cases, that's a hobbled person, right? We don't know. But, so there's magic, <clears throat> there's magic to transfer someone and there's magic to protect. And we can keep them hidden for a certain amount of time. That takes a lot of magical skill. So someone has to be very skilled to do that. And a very skilled magician could detect that, right? They could find that. And there are people looking for these things that I'm talking about. And, and again, we don't know if this stuff's going on because, you know, someone has a, an accident and it's a tragedy and we don't know anything about the soul. We don't have that knowledge yet. We don't have that discussion. We don't have that science. So really what I'm talking about is way, way ahead. We'll see in 20 years, 30 years, if any of this was accurate. <laughs> Something to think about.